watch it. Anyway, hello we're, D we're class. Back. We're back to uh doing the CP tier list stuff. Yay. Ba Bagbo word bog. Oh hey Jerry, just made it in Nicotine. So if you word think about it, Lord of the Rings is incredibly gay. Dragon, shut the fuck up. I'm right though. Mm, did it, mm. I'm right. I need I need to rewatch it, but Anyway, it is several dragon. men traveling together. Dragon, hush. <laughs> you do realize that that's something that happened in history without any gay? Shh. Yeah. Shh. Are you Shh. Are you kidding me? Do you, have you ever this heard of fantasy. a fantasy? Fantasy is not straight. Fantasy. This This is the <laughs> first primary <laughs> fantasy work that was made by a Catholic guy who believed actually in anarcho -monarch monarchism. I highly doubt that he was pro LGBT. Just because it isn't actually gay, gay doesn't mean it can't be gay. Patrick, penguin is a child. Don't expect to love you. Anyway, let's start off with the first SCP. Well, hold up. I need to. I, I need to clarify this. While yes, fair. Like in terms of like fan fiction, something can be like that. The Lord of the Rings is, by and large, not intended to be like that. All right. Now let's start. All right. SCP-307 is a creeping vine similar in appearance to the common English ivy. Uh, save for the presence of greenish thorns on the stems and the tendency of the leaves to exhibit a purple hue. The vines put down, puts down roots approximately every uh, 30.5 centimeters. The roots can penetrate any porous material, but not metal. Any part of the a plant not connected to a root system is to be considered dead and safe to examine up close. SCP-307 appears to be carnivorous and seems to exhibit some degree of intelligence. When in the presence of a warm-blooded animal, it grows at a startling rate, uh, uh, rapid rate in the direction of the animal, often growing three vines at a time in in what appears to be a flanking maneuver. Upon contact, SCP-307 appears to paralyze the victim and then liquefy and drain all internal organs, masculature, and blood. Mechanisms... Mas what? Masculature? M-U-S-C-U-L-A-T-U-R-E. Pretty sure that's musculature. The musculature, sorry. It, it would it would be talking about the, the mass of the muscles. Yeah, I've never seen that word. <laughs> that's 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 a fair word to get stumbled on. I just wanted to make sure I actually understood what was going on. Yeah, yeah. At least we know how to say it now, so whenever it comes up again. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I, I... Let me be frank. I'm not even sure if I said it correctly. I just... You technically said it right, Hatchet. It is musculature. Okay. Yeah, I, I just knew generally of what it was. Anyway, yeah. you may proceed. I just didn't want to interrupt. You're fine. No worries. Yeah. Thank you. The mechanisms by which it, it does this are presently unknown. They have, however, led the researchers calling it spider ivy. SCP-307 was first discovered by Agent... I'm going to butcher this name. Uh, Apocalymer. And redacted. Redacted where he witnessed in rapid growing of the trunk of a tree and consuming a nest of American robins. Further examination has revealed the presence of the, of the plant throughout North America. It has shown itself to be highly resistant to any attempts by, at poisoning. This has included all commercial available herbicides, exposure to aleopathic plants, and formaldehyde. Except for a sample obtained for study, the plant has been burned when it, wherever it has been encountered. However, it is very likely that numerous specimens still exist outside of the Foundation control. SCP-307 is only kept alive in the hopes of engineering a biological agent to use on the wild population. 
Mm. So it's carnivorous vines that That's are, intelligent. Are all, that are intelligent are all over uh what I'd say North like North America. Yeah. And uh very quickly consume warm blooded things. Uh yeah, that's that's kind of a problem. <laughs> Turn into a panorama. What? Yeah, what? A I'm not sure what oh. <laughs> What are you trying to say, Rather? I'm not sure really what I would classify this considering if it's mainly around the south, it sounds like it needs specific weathers in order to grow properly. Yeah. Otherwise, it would have gone into Canada or Mexico or the north. Or, I would say... well, here's one thing. It could be the same thing like with one plant that I know, the doll's eye, where it can grow up all the way in the top north of Canada all the way down to Florida. If it's like that, we're fucked. <laughs> I okay. Okay, here's the I plan. Think... Here's the plan. <laughs> Scorch Earth, everything except Florida, so that they just have to deal with it. Everyone else dies. Well, technically, that's what global warming is doing. So you know. Oh my. So dark. Uh... Anyways, uh, I think at worst it could take over an entire country, but I don't think it could take over a continent. Technically, a continent would be capable of being taken over by it if it is uh, unbothered by certain weathers, considering a continent is connected. It, as in countries, a continent is literally typically multiple countries. So, literally. Unless, unless you're Australia. Well, Australia and Greenland. Yeah. Is Greenland, is Greenland even real? That also goes for Iceland. Greenland, are, are those things... real and of its own continent. The thing Wait, about really? Greenland is the fact that it's on like a country that is yeah, not green. They found out at some Iceland. point that it is part of a continent that the majority of it is underwater. So it is literally its own continent. Oh, that's cool. I did not know that. How? I forgot when I read that, but that is definitely a weird thing. Hatchet. Wait, not hatchet. Fuck. Rattler. What? Me and Hatchet came up with an amazing idea. I came up with it, but oh, for fuck's sake! Uh... Fuck you. But here, Lord of the Rings. But it's just an ubu speak. Do not insult old classics. If you cannot recreate it, then do not mock it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I watched decide... Lord of the Rings though. It's good. Like... You never read what uh, Bright talk. Anyway. Uh, I decided to look at the, um, the incident that made it Keter, and, um, it decided to, uh, to hide part of itself inside of a D-class to, to almost completely escape, like, it destroyed half the security system, <laughs> and almost got wow. to the other half before they set it on fire. <laughs> okay, then, it is not continent, it is, uh... <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, it is, oh, my God. It is very it, intelligent. It is, literally, it is not held by continent because it could literally uh, just hide on any random dumbass and hitch a ride to the next continent. Holy fuck! <laughs> I guess... Yeah. Jeez. Uh, oh, fuck. So, I, I think that might just be an XK. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think a plan could be an XK. <laughs> but it's just like, you know what? I'm just going to prove all, everyone here wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but also, the, uh, the thing I would say, uh, Rattler, just because I kind of disagree with something you said a second ago, uh, I don't see much point in uh barring jokes and mockery behind it, well can you recreate a classic better than it 
here's here's my idea. So, Rattler, I know you're kind of old, but do you oh know God. the Sonic, like the Sonic fan dub? For again. <laughs> I was like you. I was actually alive when it started. I was also alive. No, you weren't. <laughs> no, we're talking Snap about Cube's the channel. Is not we're... that old. Yeah, the Snap Cube dub. Yeah, we're talking like, about the the fan dub, not Sonic the Hedgehog as a franchise. Yeah, no, I'm not that old, old man. The, the, but the fan dub would have started as soon as the game start, started. Fan fan they just dub. They didn't have as dub. much communication between each other dub. as they do these days. Dub. Fan dub. Dub. D U B. Oh, fan dub. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, a fan dub. dub of some. Uh. Sonic games. That's what. Yeah. Those Sonic games are also classics. So, you know. But here's the idea: take like a, the first ten minutes or like different clips of the movies, and just speak over it. It doesn't even have to be like the actual things. Just that would actually be a fun stream idea, like fun video idea. Yeah. I feel like copyright could be involved though, unlike the Sonic games. Uh... Which... No shit. Actually, how old are the Lord of the Rings movies? Copyright they, strikes. They, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, is they would... Uh, I don't think that that, like, while I think that idea could be fun in theory, if we were to actually publish that, it probably would not fall within fair use. It's no. older than me. Well, yeah, Lord of the Rings itself is older than you but it's mm -hmm. copyright is still not in public domain mickey mouse is about to be in, in uh, public domain are the oh yeah winnie the pooh is in public domain now yeah winnie the pooh is in public domain the oh, lord of the rings uh the lord of the rings books i believe the hobbit was published in 1944 and then the rest of them were published in 1945 so they're in public domain is what no, you're they are. No, they need no. to be hundred years old. They need. Yes. To... Winnie the Pooh is a hundred years old. Over yes. Over hundred years old. Over. Yeah. How old is Mickey Mouse? Let's uh, just say over a hundred years old. But you see, it's still currently owned by Disney, and Disney is like the main reason why uh, copyrights are that long-reaching in the first place, which is dumb. But point being, Congress finally said no. In six years. It's only in public domain because people finally said, you know what, fuck you, Disney. It needs to eventually go there sooner or later. Yeah. Anyway. I feel like... Oh. Let's, let's continue on. Yeah, I was about to say, once again, this, this technically is an SCP stream. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. It could be an SCP. No. Anyway. What uh, did you just say? I could make an SCP. Like, it's it looks like a regular Lord of the Rings, but it's the uwu version. Uh, hang on, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Anyway. Okay, then go make that and let us be rid of your stupidity. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh... Immediate abuse. Right. <laughs> SCP-319 is a mechanical device constructed... Uh, Circa 1984, or 1994, sorry, consisting primarily of 12 interlocking rings assembled in an 8 meter diameter spherical formation, allowing a clockwork mechanism driven by electri electric motors to rotate each ring separately on each axis. The purpose of the assembly appears to be the pre precise placement of 12 instances of SCP 319 1 in relation to each other. The assembly has been frozen in its current con configuration since its recovery, and the current motion of instances of SCP-319-1 have been almost solely due to te tectonic disturbances and thermal expansion and contraction of the material comprising SCP-319. SCP-319 designates 12 anomalous mineral specimens mounted on SCP-319. Each instance of SCP-319-1 
nearly f fully enclosed in a housing made of brass, copper, and glass, with a 12 millimeter opening pointed at the center of SCP-319-2. Each housing for SCP-319-1 is connected to heavy-duty electrical cabling that loops in a closed circuit connecting each instance. Measurements indicate a co constant 50 amperes of current and this is circ circuit despite no connection to the outside power source. SCP-319-2 designates a bubble of vacuum 2.561 meters across suspended inside SCP-319. SCP-319-2 appears to be a lower energy state than the surrounding universe. Because of the alteration of physical constants within this bubble, any matter and energy entering this bubble is annihilated, as their quantum structures are incompatible. Current theory predicts that the existence of SCP-319-2 should catalyze a vacuum mass stability event resulting in expansion of the boundary of SCP-319-2 at the speed of light, bringing the vacuum state of the surrounding universe down to its lower energy state. The expansion of SCP-319-2 appears to be held in check by the precise positioning of SCP-319-1 around it. This is supported by the fact that any re recorded movement of SCP-319-1 allows SCP-319-2 to grow by varying amounts. Over the past 50 years, vibrations and thermal expansion have moved SCP-319-1 enough to allow SCP-319-2 to enlarge by zero. Uh, zero point redacted meters in diameter, meaning that in its current rate of expansion in redacted years, containment will fail as the outer bound outer boundary of SCP-319-2 intersects the innermost ring of SCP-319. Is this SCP literally about to kill itself? Name's up. <laughs> oh. It's, it's not that it's... Uh, what were you going to say, Jerry? Uh, you go. I was going to say, it's not that it's going to kill itself, it's that it was dis like... The SCP consists of its own containment that is going to eventually fail. And when that containment fails, uh, the universe is goodbye. And we don't oh, even know you. when. <laughs> I yeah, think we all know what level this is. Yeah, we don't even need to actually have a discussion about this. It's pretty obvious. Like, it says right there. <laughs> it, oh. like, it, when this thing if this thing is allowed out it will expand at the speed of light and revert the universe to a simpler state of energy so we I. have e. two two K, uh, ZK classes mm. yeah isn't yeah. the other one the joke SCP yeah, that, yep. that's literally a phrase. And that can get worse over and over time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that entire spiel was the highlight of the first time I joined in on these uh, tier list videos. Or streams, whatever. After this SCP, it'll be... After, SCP, I'm reading, about to read it now. It'll be another joke SCP. Yay! Okay. Um. All right. Uh, SCP-339 is a group of tendrils extending off a central mass. It is approximately 50 centimeters from tip to tip, although it, this is variable. <laughs> Dragon. Got it, child. It appears to be made out of weathered copper, but shows a much higher level of durability and independent mobility. The individual, individual tendrils constantly move as though underwater, continually grinding on the sides of any containment, silently pulverizing it at, at a gradual but constant rate. Because of this, the soundproof box it is currently contained in must be replaced at, a reg at regular intervals. 
Any noise above 14 decibels will cause SCP-339 to become hostile. During this noise, and for a length of time equal to 5 times the duration of the noise, any movement within visual range will result in immediate reaction of SCP-339. SCP-339 will ex expand by extruding tendrils at an extremely high, re high rate and starring any moving organisms or objects designated targets. Once the movement ha has been restricted, SP339's tendril begin to vibrate at rapid increasing oscillations until the tar target is rendered incapable of movement. Note th that once a target is ensnarled, SP339 appears to be able to determine when the target truly becomes incapable of movement rather than merely when it stops moving. SCP-339 will return to its base shape and size. At this point, secretions of blood and a slurry of bone and muscle tissue from the central mass are to be expected. All movements of SCP-339 are completely silent, even at a very high oscillation that would pr produce noise. So... It's a thing that really wants people to be quiet. And if you won't be quiet, it will make you quiet. That's the god of headaches and hangovers. I'm very empathetic to the- It's, it's Music old. Man! Oh my god, it's Music Man! No, it's not. It's <laughs> Music Man! No, 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 no! It's Man with a spider! No, cause in all- like, how it works. An ultimate custom night, if you are not quiet as fuck, specifically like the room you're in, if you're not, it's not quiet, uh, Music Man will come and kill you. It's like Music Man! Oh my god, Music Man! Man hates sound. Music I Man. think Music Man gives them shit to sound because they yeah. like music. But... It's very smart. So anyway, I think that this is only certain groups. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, unless you take it to a child's party, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, like oh, uh, no, this is again, no. like, like I, like, are, are, is there other information we have, or that we need to, like, verify, like why this thing was made a Keter? Because otherwise, this thing sounds like Euclid. Like, um, well, it completely, uh made the Iranian military its bitch, apparently. <laughs> oh. oh, I see. Oh. I, mean, well, that's... I still think it's Peter, not Euclid. <laughs> yeah. I guess my big thing is just, like, if it's, like, not actively trying to move around, like, it could be pretty easily contained, is my thought. Like Keter is a designation uh, for both danger level and more specifically for the uh, difficulty of containing the thing. And apparently, it was the difficult. Per difficult. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Anyway, Hello. Uh, sorry, I was fighting with Discord briefly to let me talk. Uh, yeah. Anyway, if Emus can make uh, Australia military its bitch, then I think. Uh, anything else? Wait, Australia is Iranian. <laughs> How? I think those are very different things. <laughs> Just a hunch. Just... I, I think Discord cut out so Jerry couldn't hear what I said. Probably. Um, you, you did not hear what I said. Oh. What I'm did... saying that if emus can make Australia oh. military is the bitch, then I don't see why other things that are dangerous but not world-threatening could do could not do the same. Yeah. I'm well, sorry. Well, <laughs> yeah, but one, uh, that's just the case of uh, emus being badass and <laughs> people being stupid. Aren't but emus two, small? Emus are not small. No. They are slight. Have you I'm seen an ostrich? I'm thinking of kiwis. No, no, no. I'm thinking of kiwis. You're thinking of its distant relative. Good job. Very distant. Like, pretty damn distant relative. Anyway, uh... 
Um, but that's the thing is the reason I bring that up is if you put if you take an emu mm -hmm. and you lock it in a room, mm -hmm. it's not going to get out. Mm. The one of the the biggest factors of something being labeled Keter is that when you put it in the box, it's going to break out at le it's going to have some level of ability to break out frequently. The Euclid is if it's going to try to break out and there's a potential of it breaking out, safe is it's just going to stay in the box. So for the emu analogy, the emu would be safe because there's no chance of it getting out if you put it in a big room and it doesn't have some anomalous capability to just break through cement. Yeah, no. Um, there was a, a, a poem engraved on a pedestal from where it was found. Uh, nothing is so good for an ignorant man as silence, and if he is sensible of this, he would not be ignorant. Telling Hatchet to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Why does that be Hatchet? <laughs> I think Bright's just frustrated that we keep hijacking the stream. Like we said, we have said many times, it is no longer Bright's channel. Fuck we off, have to fight for... Oh. oh. We oh, have to fight for go. which one of ours it is. I'm going to comment to that Bright literally said it was engraved around that thing, so... I'm guessing that uh, that poem is a way to warn people that if you're stupid, you'll make sure it's not stupid. <laughs> yeah. So, don't so, be dumb is the thing. So, don't so, be I guess my point being, I don't want to put this in the reclassified section, because generally we've been putting things there that are either actually reclassified or just completely not dangerous. Like emojis. I, yeah, like, <laughs> I, I'd say it's still uh, certain groups, but I'm just effectively questioning why this thing was made Keter in the first place. That's, that's, that was just me. Anyway. Alright, I'm already seeing a part of his description to choke SCP. <laughs> and I'm already about to laugh from it. Oh. <laughs> Alright. SCP 343 J is an opened 284 milliliter aluminum soup can <laughs> containing 13 common earthworms. <laughs> SCP 343 J appears to operate as a single sapient organism capable of. High-pitched nasal scree uh, speech. In addition, SCP-343-J is able to teleport from one location to another. The range of extent of this ability is unknown at this time. SCP-343-J uses the ability to offer its unauthorized contributions to religious debates, anything that could be potentially be right redirected into a religious debate. As such, SCP-343-J has lowered Foundation morale average by a factor of 59 since this, its discovery in 2013. So it's Christian. It's an evangelical. It's an. It's an evangelical can of worms. It's Ben. Sh no, not actually. No, Ben Shapiro isn't like a religious debater. I mean, do you, do you count, like, fascistic Judaism as being a religious debate topic? That Why he would is that be even for? a terminology? That's kind of, what? kind of cursed. What? Anything with, like... Wait, wait. <laughs> its first What's phrase cursed? when it talks about its religious debate is, hell doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, so it's an anti-theist can. Throw it in the trash can. Get oh, it it's even it. worse. It's somehow... Anti-theists are the worst. I don't think that anti-theists are the worst. They're endemic of... Uh, Christian evangelical attitudes. Fair. But they're still shit. Yeah. 
So yes, throw this in the trash can, and this is reclassified. It just makes people frustrated because it's an anti-theist. It's and just it's, a, and it's a, no, it's, it's, a, it's it's just Vosh. Nah, it's it, not it even Vosh. Vosh is a clam. <laughs> nah, it's not Vosh. Because apparently, Vosh doesn't focus on religious topics. Apparently one of its also another phrases is, I know what a Higgs boson is. What does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean, right? Like I was trying to say before, I feel like this is Earthworm Jim's weird cousin. <laughs> <laughs> what do the numbers mean, right? Tell me. I don't know what a fucking Hague Boston is. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just want to. I just want to go back. What like bright? Not bright. Uh, dragon. What were you saying? Is an incredibly cursed phrase. Fascistic Judaism. Why is that cursed? I I don't know. I'm thinking reclassify because it doesn't even seem like a threat. Yes, reclassify. The biggest threat that this thing is a minor threat because it said it it damages morale. Yeah. Morale is damaged enough, people won't work as well, which can affect that. So it's it's slightly dangerous. Well, yeah, but just not I... as Keter level. Yeah, I, I, not Keter. <laughs> Literally, we definitely put as Keter because it can teleport, but it's... right. Yeah, that's no. yeah, again like it's going to get out of any box you put it in, but it's not particularly dangerous. It's just gonna make people depressed. <laughs> like, I, I'm pretty sure the foundation can deal with a little lowered morale when they have so many other fucked up things that they d manage. Honestly, the way it talks, it sounds like it would make both religious and atheists miserable by talking to it. Yep. Like, oh, it's that asshole. <laughs> well, I, I would say it's less that it would make both religious people and atheists uh, have a headache. It's any person who has a foundation of, like a, a foundational understanding of philosophy well enough to know that anti-theism is bad so it's going to be some atheists but anti-theists are probably going to get along with this thing very well yeah. two anti-theists exist um, i'm not quite sure what level of understanding i have but i always consider people who try to brush off other beliefs without any explanation or theory or reasoning are assholes. Yeah, that's fair. Though the the basic logic that I would generally put forward is, um, yeah, like it, it's it's not just that someone's an asshole when they do that. If they don't have any, <laughs> are you are you okay? <laughs> the old man's dying. Oh no. Penguin, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you're gonna die, I have to make it comedic. It's only right, fair. Right, right. Please, I'm not right. in danger of dying. I'm just clumsy. Right, please tape the penguin's mouth shut. No, please. that's animal cruelty. I don't care. You Put a muzzle die. on it. No, no, no. You can't. I don't like penguins either. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Bright. <laughs> so, as I was saying. The, generally the way that I would like it's not just being a dickhead when someone does that it's going to inevitably circle around to uh, co like effectively they're, they're shooting themselves in the foot because if you're willing to just automatically discount someone else's beliefs what that effectively comes to is you have to have some level of my brain <laughs> my brain hurts can can we just move on from this SCP and yep. say we don't like yeah. it yeah yeah we don't throw, throw the anti-theist can of worms into the trash and we be done with it we're we, moving we, on we now we're moving on to a zero out of ten yep we're now moving on <laughs> to Baba Yaga I think I said that name correctly isn't 
All right, SCP-352 appears to be a very old, emancipate, emaciated woman of indeterminate age and race. SCP-352 speaks Old Russian, but with an accent and dialect that makes translation very difficult. S hmm? Which l Russian language? Because there are so many fucking Russian languages that that in itself is vague at best. Yeah. SCP-352 is extremely unwillingly uh, to communicate with most of the conversations thus far made primarily of threats or statements of revenge. SCP-352 has never identified herself by any name, and due to her aggressive nature, it has been impossible to determine any background information. SCP-352 possesses a level of strength and speed much higher than what should be possible for a person her perceived age and, and physical dimensions and has been shown moving loads in excess of 200 kilograms with less physical strain and moving at speeds in excess of 70 kilometers per hour. SCP-352 can re recover from wounds that would be lethal to a human being, including decapitation and disemboweling. This regeneration can take between several days to several weeks, depending on the se severity. Internally, SCP-352 appears to be a normal human woman with muscles, bones, and organs in a state consistent with advanced age. Testing done on tissue samples has been inconclusive. SCP-352 is capable of growing very thin hair-like strands from any part of her body, apparently at will. These strands can grow several meters in an hour and appear to be very to be at least partially under control of SP-352. They have been observed crawling along the floors and up the walls and other structures. These hairs are clear and nearly invisible to the naked eye and appear to be slightly weaker than st standard human hair. These strands are also coated in a thin layer of chemical enzyme identical to the enzyme and the saliva of SCP-352. SCP-352 produces, produces an enzyme that is most concentrated in saliva and hair, but in pre is present in all bodily tissues of SCP-352. How it is produced and its exact, exact chemical makeup are unknown. This enzyme reacts on contact with human tissue and rapidly attacks the nervous system. Symptoms manifest almost immediately and include hallucinations, euphoria, suppression of cogn cognitive or logical thinking, and suppression of pain receptors. This state persists for several days with mild, mild exposure and can become permanent with high exposure. Bites from SCP-352 lead to high exposure in 99.9% .9 of cases. SCP-352 pairs be to subsist on a carnivorous diet with a strong preference of, for human flesh. SCP-352 will, will create a web of hair and wait for prey to become exposed to the enzyme and become more docile. SCP-352 will often remove and eat limbs of a prey item to prevent it from wandering away and can take several days to fully devour prey. Humans have been observed to still be in an euphoric state and have no knowledge of the outside world, even as they suffered the loss of limbs and other bodily tissue. Oh, well, that's pleasant. That's in with its description. Fucking. So, it's super Russian grandma. Who gets people high on weird enzymes and then eats them? I have never heard of this SCP, but it's now one of my favorites. Let's well, go, Grandma! SCP is literally just Baba <laughs> Yaga. The only thing it's missing is her four servants in her chicken house. Doesn't Baba Yaga mean Grandma? Not quite, but. I don't actually know what that is. It's it's Russian. No, like I don't know what Baba Yaga is as an I think, as an I think it's a Russian folklore. 
Um, okay. If I'm correct, am I correct, Jerry? Is a figure from Russian folk tales. It basically is the name under of a, a few figures, but in general, Baba Yaga can either be nice or mean, and she can eat people. She's very intelligent. She's willing to make deals. But she also has a house that can walk, and her servants are the time of the day and night. Okay, so, so this... Yeah. Okay, so this is just particularly angry eat you Baba Yaga. Yummy. Well, if, if she's eating you, you probably fucked up, so... Well, yeah, so... but this but this version is just... They mentioned it early on. This version is just constantly pissed off and trying to eat anyone they see. They're probably, they don't need... I think they don't like being just, contained. Just she's pissed doesn't mean that nobody's fucked up. Because I imagine someone had to well, really fuck up to get her like that. I think well, the reason why she's but... mad is because she's contained. I would say that's, uh, fair. That's, that's fair, but also, how else are you going to deal with that? <laughs> I would say <laughs> certain person, group. The Baba Yaga folklore person can fly in a mortar and pestle. Uh, I would say certain group. Yeah, I was going to say that. Because not it's only this... is she compa uh, com contained, uh, but, yeah. Yeah, like, like, you like she can... Her. She can destroy shit. She can. She she'll rip you apart. She'll eat you. But she's only one Russian grandma with those abilities. Right. Call just a Russian grandma. I would not call her that. But you, I guess you Fair. could call her that. Fair. That's kind of like calling. Uh, penguin, just a literal penguin. <laughs> it doesn't really I mean, that. you don't know what I look like. I could be a literal bird. You're not a literal penguin. You're a teenager from Florida. Uh, have you seen teenagers from Florida? <laughs> well, I've never. <laughs> there are some strange are looking penguins. motherfuckers around here. That's all speaking, I have to say. Speaking personally, I've never seen a teenager from Florida, so they may as well be a <laughs> mythical creature to me. <laughs> We're all giant walking alligators. The only not, thing... Not the penguin. I've seen Floridian teenagers. You're just the same teenager as every other teenager. And Baba Yaga Wait. might snap you up if you can't behave. <laughs> and if he ever gets out. I'm sorry. And I'm, I'm not about... Russian, so you know. It doesn't matter if you're not Russian. If you misbehave and she's out, then you better run. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm sorry, Rattler, but uh, the way that you put that made it sound as if all teenagers are a hive mind. <laughs> oh which does crack. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. I know teenagers are not a part of Rattler. <laughs> Rattler, oh, you know. Oh, I mean, man. I mean, you could use that as a way to move on to discussing how screwed up a lot of internet yeah. culture is and the way that it affects I our youth. Know. Red, <laughs> Red Alert, do you have a I new conspiracy theory that I'll... Weird teenage high mind again. That sounds horrifying. <laughs> Red, Red Alert, do you kids. have a new conspiracy theory that all teenagers are part of a hive mind? Oh, no, they are all teenagers are equally stupid in different ways. One could say in a hive mind way. I no, said all... different! Not same! No, 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 no. All teenagers are stupid, and that's because there's only one brain cell that bounces between each teenager, and there's a lot of teenagers, so yeah. You'll oh probably never Lord. meet a smart teenager. Are you, gonna, Go to are, the you, are you guys going to make this weird teenager SCP now? That probably already probably already exists. But um anyway. <laughs> the, the teenager high mind. High teenager. <laughs> the the twi the twive mind. 
Anyway, oh, no. the next I SCP. I just don't think it's Twilight fan fiction. Yeah, that it, does. It, yeah. Gosh, right. Anyway, the next SCP is probably someone the CDC forces to work for them. Oh. CDC. You? Uh, wait. Did I say it? Yeah, Common Disease Control. Yeah, that's what it, its name, right? Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Or central disease control. I don't know. It was either of the two. Anyway. Okay, I was just wanting to yeah. be sure on what you were making a reference to. Because there's, yeah. there's a lot of acronyms. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. SCP-353 appears to be a normal human female, 26 years old, of average physical capacity and average intelligence. Subject has the capacity to... Siphon infectious viral and va bacterial agents from her environment, nurture and store them within her body, and then redistribute them in devastating pandemic effect. SCP-353's mood directly affects the radius of infections recorded with increased emotional states leading to massively increased potency. SCP-353 seems to be immune from the symptoms of said infectious agents, but just as long as she is only passively storing them, her active will willful attempts to nurture, manipulate, and change infectious agents while they remain in her body cause her to manifest symptoms ranging from mildly annoying to severe. Sym symptoms only last as long as she is actively inducing a change in the quantity or quality of an infectious agent, and thus rarely last longer than a few hours. Oh. Examinations have shown that subject is able to store almost any infectious bacterial or viral, viral agents within her body, though she is only capable of changing agents that are able to naturally survive within the human body. As of the writing of this report, SCP-353's blood contain traces of over 1,000 different infectious agents, including human immunodeficiency virus, Ebola, Marburg, 67 different strains of the common cold, herpes sim simplex A, E. coli, uh, cholera, bubonic plague, SARS, and malaria. At least 30% of said infectious agents were previously unknown to the medical community and were possibly engineered by SCP-353 herself, making SCP-353 an invaluable resource. So, she is the ultimate anti-masker. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Did it specifically mention whether or not she was, like, actually malevolent? Seeing like how she, she says, nurture stored them within her body and then redistribute them, redistribute them to devastating pandemic effect. Why did you say that this lady probably works for the CDC? Cause, yeah, that made... Because they, they would literally force her to f put so many diseases inside of her body just so they can be stored and studied and find cures and shit. You know how the American government is. Mm. <laughs> okay, I suppose I can understand that. <laughs> so, um, uh, this lady's scary, and I think probably XK, because if there is anything I've learned from the last couple of years, <laughs> uh, humans are stupid and will just have enough people doing stupid things to fuck over the rest of the population for an extended period of time. And the logical extension of her capabilities would be to, say, create something like smallpox again. Uh oh. Something worse than smallpox. Uh oh. Have that start spreading. COVID pox. Silence, child. <laughs> and everyone dies. Yep. I. I think, yeah. I don't know if there's any viewing there, but if y'all have contentions with my assessment. Is she pretty? 
Why is it your first thought? Is the is the disease <laughs> like? Why? Why do you care? It's. I need to know. You, you do realize they have STDs in them, right? I would like to remind you, I am from Florida. Uh, being in Florida you is. You're underage, and two, no, and three, you're underage. <laughs> I didn't even see. Anything. <laughs> well, what the f you ask is, is she pretty? Yeah, only pretty. What if I want to give her a kiss kiss and nothing more? Huh? Well, then you're an idiot. <laughs> what? You who are not around your age range until you're 18 or above. <laughs> that also, yeah. So, uh, point being... Uh, she is super anti-mask, <laughs> therefore she is evil, and I think, yeah, she could potentially wipe out the human race. <laughs>